Hello there, welcome to this week's installment of Mindset Revolution with Raquel. Today, the topic is how to monetize your reason for being. And this topic came about um, through a conversation that I was having with someone on TikTok who wanted me to kind of unpack that, but it was going to be longer than the three minutes allowed um, over there on TikTok. And frankly, who's going to watch a 10 minute video over there? <laughs> Maybe somebody will at some point, but I wanted to make sure that I am able to do the due diligence around this particular topic. Now, I'm currently in Chicago in a very, very urban but posh neighborhood. So you might hear you might hear some things in the background and that's okay. Sometimes people want to do a podcast or a vlogcast and they're waiting for everything to be perfect, for everything to be soundproof. The only thing that matters is that the content is great and they can hear you. In this particular one, I will be loading the video in Spotify because it's going to be very interactive. I would try to be as descriptive as possible verbally for those who are hearing me on Anchor or who um, maybe just want to hear this the first time through to kind of get the visuals. This particular um, topic, monetize the reason for being, is around the Japanese concept called Ikigai. So you might have heard of it. Um, but I wanted to break it down for you by using myself as a, an example. And also I have an example for you and how to figure out your reason for being, but how to monetize that, right? That's why I call it how to monetize your reason for being. So what you want to do is you want to grab a piece of paper. You can get, go ahead and pause, or you can just come back and listen through. And I want you to draw, you know, uh, across so that way you have four different boxes on your piece of paper and this is what we're going to do now i'm going to tell you what it is and then i'm going to break it down for you in the first box we're going to go through something that you love this is called your flow state so think about what it is that makes you feel happy and that's how you can start it i feel happy when and then whatever comes up don't overthink this process. You can actually do this a few times or come back to it. There is no wrong way to do this. Sometimes people get into analysis paralysis or they think they have to do something perfectly right in order to find the answer. And I want to encourage you that even if you do find what I call the sweet spot for you in this time, it doesn't mean that that's going to stay that way for the rest of your life. What is important to you right now? What is your sweet spot? for you right now might be different as you get older. For instance, if you're, if you're very young, if you eventually want to get married and have children, your sweet spot right now is going to look much differently than when you have that long-term relationship and start adding amazing humans <laughs> into your life. It, you know, and that also happens after, right? When we're like in our 40s and 50s, I'm currently 48 years old. And so, you know, my life looks differently and my wants are differently than when I was in my 20s. So just keep that in mind. Do not feel as though only because we're writing it down, it's not written in stone, it's written in pencil. <laughs> you can go ahead and change it, you know, as you are growing and, and you're investing in yourself in personal development and all these other things, you're going to find that eventually it will shift and that's fine. That makes life worth living because it makes a lot of fun. Your life becomes an adventure. So in the first box, you can just call it number one. And again, your flow state. I feel happy when. Now, you can come back and do these exercises. <laughs> and number two, what does the world need, right? What do you feel the world lacks? What does your family need? So that's in number two. It, they say, okay, what does the world need? But sometimes you're like, well, I don't know what the world needs. <laughs> you might not know what the world needs, but what do you feel it lacks, right? And if you can't figure that out, then another question you can ask is, what does my family need? Or even, what would you like to see more of? These are all the kinds of questions that you can ask in order to fill box number two. In box number three, what you can get paid well for, or what are you currently getting paid for? And you might be thinking, well, I'm only a cashier. You're not only a cashier. One of my first jobs as a teenager was working at f and Yes, I told you, I just turned 48. It's, it was like a Walgreens here in Chicago. 
and they sell mostly like beauty products and things like that. So it's almost like a Walgreens mixed with a Sally's Beauty, so something around that nature. And so I was a cashier, but I remember distinctly that I was so efficient and they always had sales. So it was always super crowded whenever I worked. People will come into my line and will wait a long line and not go to the other cashiers. <laughs> Or if they didn't know me, they will go to the other cashiers. Why? Because I provided an irresistible experience to be to check out efficiently. And um, also I would pack everything, you know, in the bags correctly. <laughs> so, so I was able to give them the minimum amount of bags without it breaking. And it was easy for them to carry. I remember during that time, you know, I used to win quite frequently, like the reward of the, of the month, which was like a $25 gift card for the store, which as a teenager, I loved it because I was able to buy all these girly things. <laughs> so you might think, well, I'm only getting paid to be a cashier, but yes. But when you do everything with excellence, those skills are transferable. You're providing uh, an amazing customer service experience. And really we're all in that vocation. Everything that you want is in the gift of someone else. And so when you learn how to provide excellent customer service, whether you are a janitor or a cashier or anything else, it's going to carry over. So don't think of whatever it is you're doing as not as important. You are developing skill sets that will be transferable later. So what it is what is it that you can get paid for? Let's say that um, you are a great singer, a great writer, you know, a great editor, but you're not currently getting paid for that. There's still something that you can write down in box number three because it's something that can. Maybe you are an Uber driver or you want to be. Those are things, again, that the skills will be transferable. And I'm going to show you how to connect all those things in a little bit. And lastly, what are you good at? Because there are things that we get that we're good at, but we're not getting paid for at the moment. And you want to be able to be self-aware of what those gifts are, which is why I was saying for number three, don't just say that you're a cashier. Don't just say that you're only a janitor because there are skills there that you're getting paid for that are transferable. Now, if you need help to break this down and to talk this out, then I invite you to spend some time with me. You can go ahead and go to yourdreamlife.coach and um, there's a different um, services that you can pick out when I'm recording this as well. I am doing a free event on October 10th called you know, The Abundant Life. So this is gonna be some of that as well to be able to really tap into that frequency and that flow of favor and grace in your life. Because I do believe that the greatest manifester said, you know, it was said of him, he came to give us life and that life more abundant to the full until it overflows by all means excessive. So if, and that's a free event, everything that you need to know is that your dream life coach. Okay. So then you have these four things, right? One, something that you love, what is it that you can spend a lot of time with? What is your flow state? And you're like, wow, the time just passed. And I didn't even realize it. It's almost like that quantum time jumping. <laughs> again, what does the world need? That was number two. And again, if you don't know what the world, world needs, then what do you feel it lacks? If you can't figure that out, what is it that you see around you, your friends, your family? What is it that, that you're recognizing that they need in their life? Number three, what can you get paid for? Or, or, and what are you currently getting paid for? And really, what are you really good at? So when you do one and four, which is something that you love, combined with what you're good at, that is your passion. <laughs> that is your passion. The problem with passions is that passions don't normally pay. Until you understand how to leverage monetizing your reason, reason for being. So you might love it, but you're not getting paid for it. And so what is it that you need? You need to figure out really how to get paid for doing that. Again, I have free resources at yourdreamlife.coach. 
as well as I have free events. So you want to make sure that you're part of my email list so that way I can keep you updated because I do free events a few times a year. Now, if you do one and two, which is something that you love and the world needs, that's considered a mission. And a lot of times people can't get people to buy into the mission. So what they need to work on, right? Because we also have to look at, you know, what are you good at or in that number four, but it's also if you practice, what can you, what can you get good at? And when you have a mission, your main thing is how do you craft the marketing to get buy-in into your mission? So a lot of times, you know, people have a passion, but they don't know how to get paid for their passion. Then they, other people have missions, but they don't know how to get people to buy into that mission. And so if you don't know how to create a profitable passion, um, this is what really this is about. This is about how to monetize that. We're going to help you find the sweet spot for it. But if you're mission-minded, as most of us are who follow me, a lot of times people don't get paid for that. And it's because really they're lacking the marketing piece. There's something that you can learn. There's something that you can develop. And I always suggest for people before you hire out, you should learn how it works so that you know how to ask the right questions when you're hiring people. And you also know what the fair price for that is. So if you don't want to do any marketing, if you don't want to do any copywriting, if you don't want to put out these sale pages, there is so much information that you can get. If you have a short attention span, <laughs> like most people do, you can go to TikTok and just put in some things. There was one woman that I follow. I can't remember her name right now. And she made a million dollars in a year with no ads, none. And the way she did it was she leveraged the TikToks. She repurposed them on Pinterest. She's, and, you know, she sent people also to Instagram to get them nurtured. So TikTok is an outreach platform. Instagram is nurturing. Pinterest is the CEO, right? The search engine up, not CEO, SEO, <laughs> SEO, search engine optimization. So when you use the platforms the way they're meant to be created and then create this beautiful triangle, you're going to find the people be able to find you. I will find her name and her channel on TikTok, and I will make sure to link it in the description. So please go ahead and look at the, at the description. So that's one and two mission. When you have one and three, which is something that you love and a profession, which is what you can get paid for, that's your, I'm sorry, and what you get paid for, that or what you're currently getting paid for, that's your profession. The thing is, is that sometimes you don't actually love it. You're just very good at it. <laughs> and I recognize that sometimes what happens is that you don't recognize that that's a skill set because it's so easy for you. So if you're getting paid well for what you do and you kind of go into this flow, st flow state, automatic pilot, but people really love what you do and you're like, eh. This is where most people have it, right? They don't love it. It's just a job. And so how can you create the job or, or really get hired for the job? It really excites you and helps you, helps you to like wake up with the zeal. Now, some people, you know, they appreciate their job because it pays their bills and because they're able to go into that flow state. And so it's not really stressful for them because they're so good at it. Because at the end of the day, they really don't care. And what's more important to them is the freedom that that occupation provides to them. For them, it could be that it gives them freedom to be with their friends and families. Maybe it's an outlet for them to be social. It could also be a place where, you know, if they're very analytical, where that is actually honored and recognized, or maybe it provides for them the accolades that really speaks to their soul. So depending on your personality gift cluster, your job might just be the place where, yes, you can go and make money and you, you could be in your flow state, but then leverage something else outside of that job in order for you to really ignite some fiery passion into your life. 
And then when you have three and two, that's your vocation, which is, you know, what you can get paid for and what the world needs right now, right? So the when you're in that particular state, what you're going to need is challenges because you will get bored. All right, so now let's break it down to see what it visually looks like, right? So here's number one for me. For those of you, well, it's mirrored, so you can't really see, but I'll I'll read my handwriting. For me, something I love in flow state, for example, right? I love, I can lose track of time reading. Yes, I'm a big nerd. Like <laughs> my favorite Disney princess is Belle, only because she gets that library. And I was just like, if a man buys me that library, because <laughs> I, I love to read. That's like my fantasy for me to walk in and I'm like my work where I'm working is actually like a huge library and a Dell Tech, which is like a round kind of building. Oh my gosh, I, was, I would love that. Um, with that, I love learning. I love talking to people, um, dancing, singing, praying, meditating, spending time with my friends and family, vacationing. Those are things that I can be in my flow state that I love to do, that I lose track of time. So what does the world mean? This is what I recognize at least, or what I perceive in people around me and on people online. Peace, structure, living with purpose, healing their past, building their self-esteem, going after their dreams, doing what they are created for. I've I've known so many people who have made the grave rich with their gifts and their talents because they never went after those things in their heart. And I find that to be so sad. Tomorrow is not promised. And even if you believe in reincarnation, what makes you believe that you're going to get reincarnated one more time. This just might be your last go around. The problem with time is that we think we have it. We don't appreciate it. We don't utilize it. We don't leverage it. And the world suffers when we are not living our purpose. Everyone was made on purpose for a purpose. And when we are not walking in that, the world suffers. And what happens is that we create a vacuum and that void needs to be filled. And what happens is that one or two things happen when we don't flow in that, when we don't believe in ourselves enough to even try. Either someone who is not meant to be there, but decide, well, here I am, I'll go. And the world will still not get everything it was supposed to receive. Or what happens more often than not, a counterfeit takes the place because the void wants to be filled. I want to tell you a quick story around that. Quite a few years ago, I had a book idea and I got ideas like a download, like Matrix. Got the name of it. I got the name of the the chapters and the bullet points. I did not write the book. About two years later, I saw my book title with my chapter sub chapter names written by someone else. And that book was not as powerful as what I was supposed to write. I'm not always the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> and a couple of years later, that happened again. And the third time I got a book idea, I did it. <laughs> third time's a charm. So there are, there are things in your perspectives and the way you think, your thinking is your gift. That you might think, well, that niche is saturated. That market is saturated. No, it's not. That is one of the biggest lies that people believe. Until the world is saturated with your name, it is not saturated. You are the product. You are the niche. So if you're having this belief system that's kind of keeping you stuck of this market I really love, but it's saturated. 
Does everyone know your name? Is your name, everybody knows in their household? No? Then it's not saturated yet. Number three, getting paid for. So what have I been paid for? And what, I'm, what am I currently paid for? Management of people, coaching, training, creating training materials, energy work, project management. And then what am I good at? Or what can I become even better at with practice? I am very good at breaking down difficult concepts in a way to make them understandable. Because understanding is the first tier, is the first obstacle for you not receiving whatever it is that your dream is. The lack of understanding. Creating small action steps that deal with, then you can do daily to create momentum. That's something that I'm very good at. Why? Well, <laughs> In human design, I'm called a manifesting generator, which means that in like the DISC model, it's somebody who's the innovative creative. Um, you know, you might have that or you might have ADD, ADHD. A lot of women have that too, or like have a bunch of tabs open in our brain. And so we're multi-talented, multi-passionate. And so in order for me to get to everything, I have to learn how to make good shortcuts. So I can do more of what I love to do, free up my time to do more reading, free up my time to spend time with my kids, free up my time to spend time with my, my beloved, right? Free up my time so I can go on vacation, <laughs> important things like that. So I became very good at being able to discern what are the small action steps that I need to take or my clients need to take in order for them to be consistent. Because if you're not consistent, that's the thing. People know what to do, but they don't know how to be consistent at it, which is why they hire a coach. A coach, you know, you can get knowledge anywhere, but what you hire a coach for is to acquire the skill. And so I'm very skilled at recognizing what are the small steps my clients have to take in order for them to create the momentum. And why do you want that? Because you need those small wins to kind of kick in your dopamine, <laughs> to kick in that, like, yes, I can keep doing it and to really become allowing your brain to, um, to make you addicted to your own progress. I'm good at public speaking, at writing, at creating graphics and project management. So those are kind of like quickly the way mine looks. Now, what does this mean? How do I find then the sweet spot for it? So my Ikigai, my sweet spot, my monetizing my re reason to being, right? I coach people on how to create their dream life. Because for me, I believe that John 10, 10, that Jesus came to give us life and that life more abundant, you know, to the full by all means is excessive. And so how do you actually practically bring that to pass? I believe that it's in the four pillars of life, health, wealth, love, and perfect self-expression. How do you do that? And so I help people to do that. I love the coaching and, and watching people have their aha moments. A coach applies the knowledge to create that skill set. Knowledge you have, knowledge is free. You can get that in podcasts, on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram, books, movies, audiobooks, right? There's so many different ways that you can acquire knowledge. But knowledge, acquiring knowledge is not the same as understanding, nor is, is it the same as wisdom. Wisdom is applied knowledge and understanding, and that's what you get with a coach. In order for you to create the skill set that you need to create the momentum, to create the dream life that you want. So how did I get into that space? When you look at my Ikigai, my four spaces, and this is how you can do it for yours. What is similar and connects? For instance, for me, in the flow state, Reading, learning, talking to people. And what the world needs, training and creating materials to live out their purpose. Being paid for, structure and purpose. What am I good at? Breaking things down to be understood and easily implemented. You see how those four connect together? So when you're looking at your own, 
you know, four spaces. And again, if you need some help, then I invite you to spend some time with me. Go ahead and check that out at yourdreamlife.coach and seeing what connects. And then when you see what connects, it should like, ooh, <laughs> for me, because I, I feel it in my body. I'm like, ooh, that's a hell yes. <laughs> or it'll be a hell no. But for some people, they can feel that. They just know when they see it on black and white, like, oh, there is my sweet spot. I wanted to give you another example. So let's say in the flow state, you love to read. In the what the world needs, you're like, you know what? They need materials that don't distract them. In the what you get paid for, maybe you have a brilliant analytical mind. And in what you're good at, perhaps you're good at grammar. So this is the way I wrote it down here. See, this, those four things. So what is the sweet spot there? How can you monetize the reason for being? Well, you can be a copy editor or an editor or a publisher with that intersection because that's what the world needs. Another way that you can think of this when you're trying to figure out what your purpose is, how to monetize the reason for being, is that what irritates you? <laughs> for some people, bad grammar irritates them. You know, some people tease them and call them the grammar police. But if you love grammar, it is because it is distracting when you're reading something and commas and periods and other things are not in the right place. And so you catch it and it's distracting to you. Other people might catch it too. And then it disrupts the reading for them, which is why a lot of people don't even like to read because some things are just, the flow of it is not good, which is there's different kinds of copy editors. And so some people are very good at discerning the patterns and the flow. They're like, oh, this makes sense, but it's in the wrong place. So those things that irritate you, you are probably naturally gifted on fixing it, but you don't notice it because it's easy for you. It's natural. It's organic. You're like, doesn't everybody know this? No. <laughs> if they did, you would not have all these books, even New York Times bestsellers that have so many grammatical errors. <laughs> They need you. So this is a simple way to figure out how to monetize your reason for being. You can even start with that. What irritates me? And don't say what well, people irritate me. <laughs> but what problem is it out there that irritates you? It could be grammar. It could be host. It could be illustrations. I'm a multimedia artist, so a lot of my examples have to do with the arts. It could be for me, my main irritation is when people are not living their purpose because I know that they have a wellspring of treasure within them. Like I believe and I know that everybody has at least one book in them. One of my favorite writers is Florence Govo Shin. She has four little books written over a hundred years ago that are still changing lives, your insight, the way you think, the way you process things, the way you feel about them, your victories, they inspire and motivate and captivate an audience. And when you don't do those things, not only does the world suffer now, but your voice is to echo through time. It's to echo. What do you want your echo to be? Your life is worth you taking some time out, prioritizing some things and going after it. Go after it. Most people will not and if you are listening to me, this is your wake up call. It is time. You're looking for confirmation. This 
is it. It is time, beloved, for you to step into your destiny. Your future self is calling. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Mindset Revolution with Raquel as we focused on monetizing your reason for being. And as always, check out yourdreamlife.coach in order for you to get on the email list. I have free downloads there and for you to check out when the next free workshop or event is. I look forward to serving you further. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you soon.